Climate Change Program Officer of SAM and Third World Network. Until early 2010, she was an environmental journalist in the Star newspaper. We all know that she has been writing a lot in the Star until I think she had some differences of opinion with the management who had to choose to go and find her freedom. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good morning. Thanks for coming. Um, I'll try to cover as much as possible to give a, a general a scenario about the uh, energy situation in Malaysia. Um, okay. As my colleague has earlier introduced that the focus of this forum is on uh, electricity generation in the power sector and not so much in the transportation sector. So, uh, the my presentation would largely focus on that aspect as well, right? So where does Malaysia derive our energy sources? Yeah? We are actually quite blessed with fossil fuel and also hydro. I mean, much as we don't like it with all the attending problem, but uh, that's what we have and we have been uh, relying on that a lot. We are very dependent on that um, for our development. In the early 70s, Malaysia discovered oil and gas. Yeah? Um, I mean, oil first and later, later natural gas in the offshore. And hence, our oil and gas uh, form the backbone of our energy mix. Yeah. For, the, uh, for a good part of uh, the last uh, 30 to 40 years, yeah? coal is playing an increasing, uh, increasingly important role, um, largely because of our diversification uh, policy, the uh, government diversification policy, and the, um, over the concerns of depleting oil and gas reserves. And largely, this... Um, The, and the coal is largely non-indigenous and uh, they are imported and uh, think about energy security here. But we do have uh, some reserve in eastern uh, Malaysia, you know, in, in some remote area and we are in fact already um, that there is coal mining going on in Sarawak, right? Our local production has increased from uh, 100... I'm going to remove this. Our local production has increased from uh, 114,100 tons in 1995 to 310,000 tons in 2000, right? Besides that, hydro is also featuring very strongly now. It's another indigenous sources of energy that we have uh, begun to exploit more in the last 20 years. Yeah? And uh, in terms of renewable energy, we are very much in the development stage. Yeah? Um, we will hear more about this later today from people from Green Tech, from Energy Commission. And uh, despite news that Malaysia will soon be a net importer of energy, largely fossil fuel, we're talking about here, um, where we face imminent depletion, actually discovered oil reserve is expected to last until 2025. So you want to bear that in mind when people say that our energy um, fossil fuel is depleting very, very quickly. There's even talk about peak oil, we're going to reach that in 2040 and we are going to be a net importer of fossil fuel. Um, that statement, that claim has to be looked at carefully again. Yeah? Um, and what is the agenda of these people saying so? Right? Also, um, we should also bear in mind that um, well, Malaysia is actually an exporter. We are still exporting oil and gas. We are locked in in long-term contracts and largely to Far East countries like Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. Alright, um, of course, we are a developing country, so we need energy and uh, growth is there and uh, depending on which figure you're looking at, but I, I look at several documents from different sources, it averaged about 6% and electricity consumption is actually growing very fast. Okay, what are the uh, guiding policy and strategies in the energy sector? Right, as you see in the slides here, right. our national energy policy which was uh, formulated in 1979 set out three key objectives, uh, supply, utilization, and environment, which means that um, you know, we, we should be able to develop efficient, secure, and environmentally sustainable energy sources yeah, at affordable cost. Yeah. 
The world uh, oil crisis in the 70s became a wake-up call for a lot of countries, including Malaysia. Even though at the time, uh, we, were, we just discovered oil, right? And uh, then we, um, it shows that we are very vulnerable, despite we have oil reserve, like many other countries, that over-reliance on one conventional sources, right, will uh, put our, you know, will jeopardize our development plan. So the government has responded, actually, um, I think they responded very quickly with this uh, national depletion policy in 1980. The uh, national depletion policy basically is to address is to conserve the resources by limiting daily production of petroleum, which they have set at 630,000 barrels per day. While the consumption of gas is limited to 2,000 um, million standard cubic, meat, cubic feet per day. Yeah. And this policy was further enhanced through the uh, four fuel diversification policy in 1981. As you can see, it's very quickly, one year after that. Yeah. And the uh, four fuel, they are talking about oil, natural gas, coal, and hydro. Right? And uh, renewable energy first appeared in the 8 Malaysia plan, where we, uh, it was featured quite strongly in 5 fuel policy. But the target set for renewable energy was very, very low. I can't quite remember the figure now, but if I remember correctly, it's something like, three, is it 300 megawatt? Uh, Mr. Francis? 500 But anyway, we did not achieve that uh, objective in uh, eight, the 8 Malaysia plan uh, when it was completed. Right. And then we have the uh, Renewable Energy Policy and Act. It was just passed this year in Parliament, April. Okay. Who are the uh, major players in the country energy sectors? Okay, this can be uh, largely divided into uh, divided them into two categories: those that supply and those who regulate and plan. Right. As you can see up there. Okay, we have Tanaga National, and then we have Sabah Electric, Sandram Berhad, which is actually a subsidiary of TNB in Sabah. Right. But oddly, Sarawak Energy is on its own. Um, production, transmission, and distribution is handled by Sarawak um, Energy Berhad. Right. These are the utilities. And then we have the private um, operators that came in, uh, IPBs, right, Penjana Bebas, right, in... Uh, following the uh, peninsula white blackout in 1992. So, right, the last thing um, that we hear after renewable energy is uh, SEDA. SEDA was also passed in April 2011, which is Sustainable Energy Development uh, Authority, which will handle the uh, FIT and large part of all the financing issue of green, uh, green energy. Right, these are the RE-specific uh, policies, as you can see. Right. Um, I mentioned earlier the 8th Malaysia Plan, 5 fuel policy, where they first uh, set a target for renewable energy. And then in the 9th Malaysia Plan, we have a 5 years uh, project on um, Malaysian building integrated photovoltaic. Well, uh, the, um, the result of this project is um, quite makes some people felt that you know, they could have done much, much better. But um, personally, this is a very good start for Malaysia. At least we are able to you know, test the technology and then the build up our capacity and our institution as well. And in 2001, there's, uh, there's STRAP, there's a small renewable energy policy. Where there, there's also criticism about it because the, uh, there's limit of the sale of the electricity generated to the grid. They limit it at 10 megawatt, uh, which in terms of economic, it may not be too attractive to get people on board you know, to adopt a small renewable energy policy because the um, capital investment might be very, very high. Right. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's uh, RE Act this year, and uh, a lot of people must have heard about the Green Tech Financing Scheme, uh, which also involves financing in the energy sector. Um, the uh, feed-in tariff, which will uh, come in sometime, probably at the end of this year now. And the talk about the Renewable Energy Fund, and uh, also a Renewable Energy Levy, where heavy power use, uh, this is a concept of polluters pay. If you use more, then you pay more, right? And um, all in all, FIT is actually projected to increase our renewable energy uh, 
sources from 61.2 megawatt, megawatt, which is very low now, to what you can see, I don't know how many percentage jump is that, uh, how many hundred thousand, uh, how many hundred percent, 985 megawatt in 2015. And, and you can see the projection increasing to 2080 megawatt by 2020. That's when we will supposedly achieve a developed country status. Well, this is a slide that shows uh, some of the uh, early projects of renewable energy that the country has undertaken. So we actually have our first grid-connected renewable energy from a uh, Jana landfill, that is in Selangor. And then the biomass in uh, Sabah is from biomass from uh, oil palm plantation. But um, there are shortcomings, as I pointed out earlier, that the tariff is low. And then uh, the grid connectivity is very, very limited. Right. So these are the barriers in the early stages of our development of renewable energy in Malaysia. Energy efficiency and conservation, uh, where are we? Right. Um, as you can see, that uh, the, the government is um, quite serious now about energy uh, efficiency. Um, because this is one of the two bronze strategy to address our sustainable energy need. Right. I'm not going to give much detail about this because we have someone from Energy Commission, Mr. Francis, is going to talk more and give more details on this. 2015, um, Malaysia committed to a voluntary emission cut of 40% emission intensity, which means every GDP, every unit of GDP that we produce, we commit to cut 40%. Yeah? And um, that we have a post-Copenhagen road map which is our EEE and uh, in the waste sector, right, that's biogas. Right? We're going to capture the uh, emission from uh, landfill. Right? And um, this hopefully will help Malaysia by 2020. This 40, uh, voluntary 40% emission intensity is by 2020. This is the uh, our commitment to the international, uh, the international fora. Um, well, in terms of GHG, if you look at our energy mix now, we are going uh, towards adoption of a lot of coal. Uh, it's going to, uh, coal is going to form more than 50% of our mix by 2020. And we have to bear that in mind. Coal means fossil fuel and therefore carbon emission and climate change. Yeah? Uh, according to the National uh, Communication 2, NC2, which is um, where Malaysia had to submit this report to the uh, UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, in our GHG invent, uh, inventory, Malaysia actually claimed that they are now a net sink, but that is of <coughs> the figure is uh, two thousand figure, right? But now, uh, because NC two is always uh, working behind time, so the figure that they quoted is from year two thousand, but we don't know now whether we are still a net sink, and even if it's net sink is correct, you know, that is the government has claimed, right? Um, we also have to bear in mind the international negotiation where uh, we are not sure whether the Kyoto Protocol is going to get another lease of life and extension into the um, you know, second commitment period. But at the same time, we have another negotiation track in the long-term commi uh, commitment aid. And where even the non-NX1 country, which are developing country, will have at some point in the near and not too far future, we may have to some form of uh, be imposed with some kind of mandatory uh, cut, right? And there might even be a new treaty to replace Kyoto Protocol. <coughs> okay, some of the contentious uh, plans or issues that um, we we like to you we'll hear more about it uh, throughout the day and also tomorrow is uh, these are the future, very immediate future plan that the government has um, in mind. Uh, they have already announced expansion of coal-fired power plant of Tanjung Bay, which is currently which currently stood at 2,400 megawatt. And uh, the reason for doing so, their justification is that we are not going to get the energy from Bakun anymore as planned. The government initially had planned to transfer Bakun energy using uh, submarine cables, and that plan has been scrapped. Uh, Sarawak wants their own energy for their dirty, en uh, dirty industry. Okay. And then the, the Sarawak 12 dams, uh, these are something that is uh, very, very worrying. Uh, they are pushing ahead quite quickly. Uh, Murung is almost 50% complete. 
But recently, because of I believe it's because of strong resistance on the ground against Baram, they have scrapped, or rather they have postponed. Yeah, they have postponed Baram, and uh, but they're going for another dam in the Rajang Basin, Bali, where there's not much people living there, and therefore there's less resistance. Uh, and uh, we also just heard that they are facing difficulties in gaining investment from um, Chinese uh, interests, and therefore that is one of the reasons why they have a shelf barang for a time being, and they are going for Limbang and uh, cooperating with the Brunei. Right, and of course the nuclear power plants, which was announced uh, last year. Right, um, and then the IPPs, the Power Purchase Agreement Review, they are coming out. Many of these IPP, the first generation IPP, will expire in phases between 2014 and 2016. Right. Uh, in, in total, that is the combination of their capacity. Right, in conclusion, what can we say from all this um, stuff that we have gone through? Uh, we're taking a very general overview of it. Yeah. Um, we appears, Malaysia appears to have very sound policy like many other things, not just in the energy sector, but implementation is something else. Yeah. Um, if you look at the uh, national energy policy, the objective, the three objectives, right? Uh, supply, uh, sustainable supply, and then the uh, efficient utilization and uh, sustainable development of energy project or the energy sector. Largely, you can say that the objectives are not met. They have not been met yet, right? And then uh, we look at renewable energy, and we can say that this is a very, very strategic sector. It is very, very important for us to achieve energy security, for us to achieve our, um, to cut our emission, and also um, in terms of energy efficiency, these, these are the key things that we should push for, right? And of course, we know that policies, enabling policies are very, very important. And uh, the, appro the appropriate fiscal incentive is going to see us realizing our strategy, like in, in terms of uh, developing further our renewable energy. Okay, I will just, um, I just want to end by saying that energy development should not be the sole concern of utilities, those people who supply, and also uh, the government. Uh, but very encouragingly, the public are taking a very strong interest in energy issue now. Right? And we see that they are demanding for more transparency, uh, especially in terms of the um, subsidies that are going to the IPPs. And uh, I'm sure we're going to hear more of this uh, from uh, Tony later. Well, Malaysia is actually at a crossroad. We, we have an opportunity now to correct our, our weaknesses in managing a very important aspect of development, and that is... Uh, to continue our growth in a sustainable manner, both at the national and global level. Right? So ensuring sufficient energy resources to enable us to prosper, instead of suck into investment that leaves us you know, be expensive, dirty and dangerous options. So we are really at the crossroad now, with all the plans that the government have in mind, and yet, uh, at the same time, they are doing all this ROE development stuff. So, um, we will see that uh, throughout the next two days, we. This, this, is, this kind of um, thoughts is going to come up um, very often and um, we hope that you will, besides the speakers that are sharing their experiences and their thoughts, the audience will also share their thoughts with us. All right. Okay, I'll end here. Thank you very much.